All right, good morning. So now we've got our three drawings, our technical drawings of our side view of our bridge. We've got a truss bridge. We know it's 100 feet long. It's somewhere between 30 and 40 feet tall. And we've got three nice, accurate drawings. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick one of them, whichever one you like best, whichever one you want to make. It can be the easiest one. It can be the hardest one. And we're going to make our 3D model in SketchUp. So when we're going into SketchUp, uh, hopefully you should have downloaded the little template that we have right here. So you can look around, you can see where our roads are going to be and where the bridge needs to go. So in SketchUp, I'm going to go over a couple of things that might help you out beforehand. And then let's see, let's go with this one. I'm going to pick this bridge right here to go through. So a couple little tips beforehand. Let's get into SketchUp here. Um, all right, so I've got SketchUp here. I've got my template loaded right here. And so remember, you can move around it, you can look, you can measure. If you want all of this stuff out of your way, you just want a nice clean page, um, one thing you can do is just open a new file and make your bridge from there. You know it needs to be 100 feet by 30 to 40 tall by 25 feet wide. And you can just make that bridge there. You don't necessarily have to use this template if you want to. It just gives you kind of more of a visual feel look to it. it makes it a little bit more interesting. But if you want to get rid of this stuff just temporarily, if I want to select it all, so you know you, with select you can use the select tool, I can put my mouse around it, but you have to put your mouse around the whole thing. On my keyboard, if I press control A, so on my keyboard I press control A, what that does is it selects all, and that works for most programs. Google Docs, Google Sheets, all every most program where you can select something, if you press control A, it selects everything. So right here, you can see that there are some things that have a red box around it, some things that have a blue box around it. What that means is that the stuff with the red box is locked. That means you can't move it around and edit it. Stuff with the blue box around it is not locked. So you can take it, you can move it around however you want to. Um, to lock or unlock something, right click it and it says lock right there. So I wanted to make it so I couldn't move that anymore. Right click it, unlock. The bridge over here, if I wanted to change it for some reason, right click it, unlock. Now I can do that. If I want to hide it so it's not in my way. So this rubble right here, we can delete that if we want to because that's a broken bridge. We want to get rid of that. So I'm going to click it. I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to click that one. I'm going to hit delete. So now we have a nice clean area to build our bridge with. But if I want to get the rest of this stuff out of my way, but I don't want to delete it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control A to highlight everything, to select everything. And I'm going to right click and press hide. And when I go to hide, what that's going to do, oh, that just made him disappear. Okay, so I have to unlock it first, apparently. I'm going to unlock it. Now everything should be blue. Now I can right click and hit hide and now it all went away again. But what if I wanted it back? Now it's gone. If I go to this little glasses right here, these are my views. So this has a lot of helpful tools into here. This is display. And if I want to show hidden objects, hidden objects, boom. Now it's all back right here. You see it's all kind of blurred out. It's because it's hidden, right? So if I can click on it, or I can hit Control A, select everything again, right click, unhide, and it's back. So hiding and unhiding might be useful if you want to just get rid of everything, get it out of your way. And then I can just uncheck that again so you can build your bridge. Um, another thing you can do, let's just undo all this, undo, undo is I can just move somewhere way out here and I can build my bridge out here in a nice clean area. All right. So yeah, let's do that. Let's build our bridge over here. A couple more things that might be helpful. So one is if I take this line tool and I just start drawing, 
let's make a triangle. You see right there, it looks like it's a good triangle, but if I look at it from the side, it's a, that's not what I thought it was gonna do. So if you're using the line tool, sometimes it helps to make a rectangle first. So I can see here, that's a blue one, so I know that that's gonna be flat on the ground. If I wanna change my axis, so this is a useful tool. If I press left on my keyboard, I just press left and now it is green. So now it's gonna line up with that green axis. If I press right, it's gonna line up with that red axis. So depending on what axis you wanna do, you remember you have your X, Y, and Z, up, left, and right, change that. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle right there. Now, if I use my pencil, I know it's gonna work a little bit better. So if you're drawing and it's doing weird axes, that might be one thing to look at. Um, another couple of things before we get going here that are going to be useful. One is moving, one is copying, one is rotating. So let's just make a beam for our, let's delete that. So let's put a big rectangle on the ground, let's make it 100 feet long. So I'm going to type in 100 feet, comma, space. Let's make all of our things one foot three inches wide. So I'm going to type one foot three inches. All right, so now I have a hundred foot by one three inches. Use my push pull. I'm going to pull that up. Again, click on it. Move your mouse one foot three inches. And remember, you can look in that bottom right corner where I'm typing that. So I've got my piece right here. So this could be the base of my bridge. You know, that's my span right there. So a couple things I can do with this. Remember, if I just click it once, it's gonna highlight just the face. If I click it twice, that face and just that edge, if I click it three times, it's gonna select that whole thing. If I'm going to use this piece a lot, I'm going to make it a component. Because a component, component, remember, you can reuse it as many times as you need to. That way, when you're editing it, you edit once, it'll change all of them. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to hit Make Component. And I'm just going to call this, I don't know, Span. You can put a description here. You don't have to. I'm going to say this is 100 feet by. Uh, one foot three inches. Okay. So, 100 feet by one foot three inches, and I'm going to hit OK. So now this is one piece right here. If I want to move it, you got your move tool right here. Shortcut is M on the keyboard, and I can click it and I can move it around. All right. Excellent shortcut that might come in handy a lot is if I press control on the keyboard, you'll see that little move icon. The four arrows has that little plus right next to it now. So when I hit control, see how it makes that little plus next to it. What that plus means is it's going to make a copy. So if I select my piece, if I go to move, if I press control, so I get that little plus, now when I move it, Look at that, it's going to make a copy of that right away. Um, so it's just a little shortcut, you don't have to do control C, control V, but if I have this piece that I'm going to reuse a lot, hit control, move it around. When you're moving something, I'm going to undo, undo, undo. Again, sometimes I might move something, I'm going to do that shortcut, move, control, and I might try to put it next to it, but it might shift it off into weird 3D land. So if I, with the move tool, again, use those arrows on your keyboard, up, left, and right. So if I want to move this straight back this way, on my keyboard, if I press up, it's going to, it's going to say constrained online. Remember that blue line is your up and down axis. If I press left, 
constrained on that green line, that green axis. If I press right, constrained on that red axis. So it's only going to move forward and backwards, side to side, up and down. So that's going to be helpful when you're trying to move pieces around. If I want to take two pieces and put them together so they're touching, if I just grab it in the middle here and try to move it, it's going to do weird things. It's going to go through each other like that. Um, not very easy, not very accurate. But if I grab the corner of a piece, so where you get those little purple circles, let's say I want to put this right next to that one. If I grab the corner, click it, move my mouse to that next corner, you see how it kind of snaps into place when I get close. All right, so right there, it stopped doing it because it's out in front, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. And I click here, and you see that it snapped into place. So I can take those two parts, and because I grabbed the corner, I'm lining up corner to corner, and it's working well. All right, so that's another nice shortcut. The other one I want to show you is rotate. So if I have this top piece and I want to rotate it upward, I'm going to click on my rotate button right here, right, which I think is Q. The shortcut is Q, as in Quebec for some reason. But um, rotate, rotate tool. So the rotate, first I have to select my object, and then it is a three-click process. It's kind of weird. So it's so my piece is selected. Click once move my mouse, click twice, move my mouse. All right, and that's how you rotate a piece. So again, I want to select my object, click rotate, click once. So here you see again, I've got that green, red, and blue circles. I can try to get to where I need to be with my mouse, or again, you can click on their keyboard. If I hit left, it's going to be green. If I hit up, it's going to be blue. If I hit right, it's going to be red. So like if I did it on the red axis, you know, it would rotate around here. If I did it on the blue axis, it would rotate around here. And if I did the green, it would do it around here. So pick which axis you want to do it on. So let's rotate it upward how we had it a second ago. So the first click you do is going to be the center point of whatever you're turning. So like if I was, if I had a ruler right here, if I clicked right here in this hole in the center, it's going to pivot around that point. If I click over here, it's going to pivot around that point. If I click right here, it's going to pivot around that point. So depending on where that first click is, is what it's going to pivot around. So I want to pivot around, let's say, this, this corner down here. So I'm going to hit left on my keyboard to make sure it stays on that green axis. I'm going to hit here for my first corner. And then that next click is where you're just kind of grabbing some part on here. So I've clicked once to make it my pivot point, clicking twice to grab it, and then clicking it a third time is going to just move it forward. So I clicked once, click twice, and then click a third time to move it. Now you can look in my bottom right corner there, you can see exactly what the angle is, or just like everything else, if I don't click again, I can type in, I want that at 60 degrees, hit enter, six zero, enter. Now that has been rotated to 60 degrees. Just like with the move tool, I can use a shortcut. So if I have this first piece right here and I get my rotate tool and I hit that control button. So you see that little you can sort of see it. That little plus shows up again when I hit control. And what, what that does, remember, it makes a copy. So if I have just one piece here, hit control, click once, click twice, click a third time. Let's make it 45 degrees, enter. 
Now I've got two pieces because it made that copy at the same time. All right, so. So there's a couple of little shortcuts right there. Now when you're making this bridge, if your pieces kind of go through each other like that, for this assignment, that's fine. Um, you know, it, it depends on kind of how comfortable you are with SketchUp and everything. If your pieces go through each other, it's okay. It's not the greatest. You know, ideally you would have pieces that you know, might be next to each other, but still touching. So like that. Or yeah, we'll get we'll go through that as we go along. So right now, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna start over and make one of my bridges right here. 